What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for our Tottenham update. A few bits and pieces to get through today. And let's start off with Steve Hitchin. As Matt Law uh, confirmed yesterday, that Steve Hitchin quits the club and is targeted by Everton for the director of football role. And then came the, the, came the club statement saying Tottenham confirmed that technical performance director Steve Hitchin has left the club. David Heitner this morning is saying that Steve Hitchin had a lit, had little involvement in the transfer window last summer and again in January and was focused more on overseeing departments such as sports, science and medical, um, which is interesting. I mean, since Paratici came in, it was hard to see a role for Steve Hitchin, wasn't it, really? Yeah, well, I think the writing was always on the wall, wasn't it? As soon as um, Levy took the decision to make uh, Fabio Paratici our sporting director, Hitchin's role was always going to be a bit reduced. Obviously, we saw them on the touchline together, didn't we? Um, at the beginning of the season, celebrating together, it kind of gave the impression they're more of a team rather than Paratici being... Apparently, they were good friends before Paratici even came to the club. Yeah, that's well, that's yeah, and, and Steve Hitchin was actually at the club in the early in the mid-2000s as a scout for a good period of time before um, going on to Liverpool and and um, then making his way back to Tottenham in um, 2017. But it was always, I think the Ryan was on the wall uh, as soon as Paratici got appointed. So it's no surprise to me that Hitchin, it, look, look, Hitchin's the one who's resigned and he's the one who feels like his role's so reduced that it's not fulfilling enough for him anymore. And I understand that. And as much as it's not totally his fault why it didn't completely work out in terms of the transfers he brought in, the record of of transfers since he's been in the club has been pretty poor. And that's the reality, and that's why fans were frustrated. But I did think he got maybe a lot of the brunt of the um, criticism, where maybe it wasn't all down to him as to why the record was that poor. But he definitely has to take a big responsibility for it. Is Steve Hitchin yet another Daniel Levy scapegoat? Probably. I mean, for a lot of the signings we made, I'm sure Hitchin had one option, and then it was too expensive, so he had to go down the list. But at the end of the day, he's our, he was our, our chief scout and sporting director at the time. Well, he wasn't sporting director, but he was chief scout, I think. Mm. And um, he had, it was his responsibility to bring players in who were going to improve the team or, be, or, or improve the squad. And even if, it's, even if they're third or fourth choice, you know, if, they're t if there are too many players who aren't making an impact, that's, that is down to you at the end of the day. Mm. And unfortunately, that's the that was the case. Yeah, completely agree. I mean, a lot of fans weren't happy with Steve Hitchin, but I do feel like a lot of the time his hands were tied uh, by Daniel Levy. We saw deals fall through for Skriniar, for Jack Grealish, for um, Paolo Dybala, for a lot of players, a lot of top quality players where you're thinking if they come in, they would be the star signings that we were looking for. But ultimately, um, all the signings that were brought in, you're saying what, Lucas Moura, that's about it That in terms of really good signings. Uh, Lucas Moore and Hoybier, really, are the, and Regulon are like the three players that really made an impact on the first team. But apart from that... I have to see our tier list for that. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's already out, so you can go and have a look. So, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, Steve Hitchens' role at Tottenham will always be kind of remembered as really bad recruitment. That's, that's the sad reality. But the fact of the matter is, uh, he's already being lined up by potentially by Newcastle or Everton. So clearly in the game, he's still pretty highly thought of. So I wish him good luck, but it didn't work out at Tottenham, unfortunately. Mm. All right, let's move on to Tangi Undombele Lekip uh, saying uh, yesterday that Tangi will himself pay the difference between the part of his salary and the part that Olympic, uh, that Leon will, play, will pay, uh, which, are owed, which Tottenham are owed. Um, often we have words without the facts on the contracts. Uh, and that was by the Leon Sporting Director. And he also said that we did our part. We needed a supplement. And it was, he, it was him who provided it, which was very interesting. So, I mean, a lot of people are saying that Tangi Ndombele is just a money grabber and all this kind of stuff. But he's paying his own wages to, to get out of Tottenham, which is interesting. I never thought that was the case for Ndombele. I always thought he, he like, when a lot of the times he was trying to make it work with himself. But um, I think that when it came to his mentality, maybe how he sees football, I think it just came at odds with a lot of different managers. I don't think he um, came to Tottenham with, with you know, with a laissez-faire attitude of, I don't really care about how it goes or anything like that. I'm just happy to be on 200 grand a week and um, and I never wanted to be here in the first place or anything like that. I did think he came 
uh, because he was ambitious and he wanted to come to a club who'd just been in the Champions League final and um, he wanted to grow as a player. But unfortunately, with Pochettino, once Pochettino left and the different kind of managers we had, um, it all fell flat. And um, fair play to him for paying part of the wages um, because that shows that he know, he wants to go to a different stage. Yeah, he wants to knuckle down and start playing again and, and go, get back to his football. There's a few interesting quotes, I think, from him as well. Yeah, let's get into them. Um, that he was talking about. So since he's, he's done an interview uh, since joining Leon, and he has admitted that the move back to Leon is a bit of a risk. He says, coming back could damage my image. There were a few discussions with a few... With a, with a, I think going to Tottenham damage your image, mate, not yeah, coming back to Leon. But that's what he's saying. He said, there are a few discussions with a few uh, clubs. It's true that I know Leon well and weighing up the pros and cons, I have, th I have three and a half months before the end of the season. And I think Leon is not a bad idea for me, even if I did hesitate a bit. At Tottenham, I had five managers in two and a half years, and that's complicated for all players. You have to get used to all different coaches. It's true. I had a bit of trouble at Tottenham, um, but I believe I became a better player in England, even if it didn't go, even if it hasn't gone too well. So, which is the interesting, but I think the, the, the takeaway there, what you're saying, I had five managers in two and a half years, and that's difficult and complicated for all players. That's one hundred percent right, and that goes as much as that goes to show the responsibility Tottenham have as a club for not for it failing as much as Ndombele has responsibility as well. And obviously, there are players like Kane who um, he can work under any manager and any way of playing. But when it, some there are certain players when you're coming to a new country and you're trying to settle in, and you, all of a sudden. You're coming in thinking one you're going to be playing one way and then you're throwing different manager after different manager at them and not trying to, and you're still trying to settle into the team it can be very very difficult so i think tottenham have to bear a big um, part of the responsibility for why this transfer ultimately failed yeah and you've got to say it's probably a very similar case for giovanni lo Celso as well to be honest i mean to be honest it's probably no coincidence that every player we've brought in in that summer um just didn't work out uh, for one reason or another. I mean, they changed philosophies like three times by the time Undombele yeah. came in. And yeah, I mean... It's it, easy it's, to blame It's them, easy to blame Tangi. But look, I think Tangi obviously does have uh, some blame on himself as well, but the club probably are most to blame. Yeah, the fact that all most of our signings have ended up, you know, not going great since um, since we've started all this change, it's no, it's no surprise. It can't be all the players fall you know the, you, the club have to take a lot of responsibility for that agreed agreed uh, let's move on let's talk about Luis Diaz um, obviously uh, a player that we got we got gazumped by by Liverpool and the Athletic are saying that Liverpool were grateful to Spurs for lowering the price down for Luis Diaz Porto were initially demanding 80 million euros which the Reds were not prepared to pay but Spurs put in months of hard work uh, to lower the fee which Liverpool capitalised on and matched the offer great so we did live all Liverpool's negotiating. So they basically outsourced Levy for their negotiating <laughs> yeah, and then just pounced. Basically. Fantastic stuff. Um, look, there's not much to say about, about it and uh, uh, other than the fact that uh, we got done by Liverpool pretty much in this deal last yeah, minute. We got completely and, played. Yeah, we did. And we put in the legwork and they came in and say, yeah, that's a pretty good price. Let's take that. That's yeah, pretty much and, what know, happened. And it, it was obvious to see, I mean, maybe it wasn't obvious completely at the time, but now it's obvious <laughs> to see what happened because he wanted to go to Liverpool, right? His, his uh, agents wanted him to go to Liverpool. Tottenham come in with his offer. Tottenham are trying to keep it all hush, 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 hush. And they're leaking everything their side to the press mm -hmm. in Portugal, um, trying to get Liverpool to come out and make that bid, which ultimately did happen. So, I mean, we got completely played in this transfer deal this summer uh, by Luis Diaz's team, by Liverpool, um, by everyone, to be honest. And I think the only way that this deal could have happened is if we literally went in in the final hour of the window. That's mm. the only way this transfer could have happened. And, you know, a lot of people were angry about the way this deal happened and, and uh, the way Tottenham handled this deal. But I don't think Tottenham really could have done anything different. And people are saying, oh, if we would have gone for him in earlier, we would have got him. That's, that's, not, that's not the case. If we would have gone for him earlier, Liverpool would have done the same thing just earlier in the window. So yeah, probably. ultimately, um, I think that this guy was always going to go to Liverpool and probably Spurs should have done more due diligence uh, into this deal, um, knowing the background of, of Louise and what his agents are knowing and, and the Liverpool interest in him too. Well, the fact of the matter is Liverpool, were gonna, I don't think it's necessarily true because Liverpool were planning on going for him from the summer. And so 
the fact that we went early, we nearly we were trying to jump the gun, trying to beat the competition. So I think Liverpool decided to bring their plans forward, but that's because of how Tottenham acted. So uh, he wasn't always going to Liverpool this window. He was no, not this Liverpool, window. He was always, he was always going to end up at Liverpool. That was that was where they wanted. But maybe if Liverpool were really intent on not getting him this window, there was an opportunity there. Yes, but I think once the interest comes around and once you know, once a club like Liverpool know they're going to lose their best target to Tottenham, they're going to go in there and they're going to make the bid because they're a proper club and they yeah they we don't do that though. we wouldn't do that we say yeah. we're going <laughs> for the summer we'll and we do, wouldn't and they did do that yeah so i think once the tottenham bid came apparent in the press that portugal all the portuguese press leaked it liverpool were always going to come in and match it always mm. yeah and um i've got a feeling this could be another mane in terms of a player that we could have gotten and then gone to Liverpool and he's going to become world class. But that's the thing. I don't I don't consider him as a player that we could have got because we got completely played by all sides, completely played. He was all like I said, I think that he was always going to end up at Liverpool and and us going in for him, like I said, just just hurried up the process for Liverpool. Yeah, but I think it's a player we've missed out on and Liverpool got him and he's going to turn world class to Liverpool. Yeah, but you know, we might have missed out on him, but I don't think he, he was ever going to come here because of um, Liverpool's very strong interest in him. I mean, he was number one target for them for, for a while now. Mm -hmm. so yeah. It's what it is. Let's move on. Let's talk about Kulusevski and Bentancourt, two signings that we actually did get through the door. Um, let's talk about their work permits. Dejan Kulusevski has been granted his work permit following his move from Juventus on deadline day. The Swedish winger is in line uh, to make his Spurs debut this weekend against Brighton in the FA Cup. So good mm. news on that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. We're going to be at the stadium. So looking forward to seeing um, Kulusevski in the flesh for the first time. And I'm very excited to see what he can do. And I, well, I don't think he'll start. Um, we'll have to wait and see what Conte says tomorrow. Maybe we, we there are some injuries or whatever that we don't know about. But I would like I would like to see him get some minutes because I'm very excited to see what he can do. Mm, I would like to see him. I, I personally would probably like to see him start. I think it would be uh, nice to see, especially as we're going to the game and stuff like that. But Rodrigo Bentoncourt is a bit of a, a different case. Ali Gold saying today that Bentoncourt is expected to arrive at Tottenham today, but he will probably not be able to train with his two teammates unless uh, until he gets that work permit finalised, which hasn't come through yet. Yeah, they say you have to be in England for at least a day or something for to get the work permit. So it looks like that will come in tomorrow, and we'll come in in time for him to be registered for the squad. Um, he's on, he hasn't trained. Yeah, and it's, yeah, he's not going to play, I don't think, and it, it's probably not right. So looking like he'll probably. We'll have to wait probably till Wednesday for his debut. Who was that transfer where uh, we were waiting for that work permit and they were saying like, oh, uh, he's not training, he's just looking around the training ground? No, that was Conte. Oh, that was Conte. That was it. That yeah. was Conte. They'll probably do something similar. No, he would know because he wasn't. He didn't take training. He was just observing. That was it. Yeah, yeah. that was it. <laughs> <laughs> of course he was. So you say Bentacor would probably be the same. He'll probably get a training session in, but yeah, he's not training. He's, he's just, just uh, observing. No, they're just playing football. He's yeah, not training. Like, yeah. Just having a game. What, he can't. A about. Yeah, he can't have a kickabout now. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, let's move on. Uh, Brian Hill made his debut last night for Valencia. Um, in the cup against Cadiz in the Copa del Rey. Um, he played 90 minutes and Valencia progressed into the semi-finals of the cup. And apparently, I didn't see the game, but apparently by all accounts, he had a really good game. Yeah, apparently I've seen a few clips of him. some dribbling, which looked uh, really good. But um, he played 90 minutes and uh, apparently he's one of um, Valencia's better players, although it was only 1-0 and they didn't, um, I think it was 1-0, and they didn't uh, play have the best of performances as, as the team Valencia. Apparently he was playing on the left-hand side and we had a very positive first start. Yeah, so four four two, I believe. No, but a four three three. I thought left winger. No, I thought it was a four four two. I could be wrong, but that's the formation I saw on the. Um, I on saw the four. I saw four three three with him on the left wing. So uh, that's what I saw. But um, uh, again, I'm not 100 percent sure. But yeah, apparently he had a two good game last night. Was it two one? Yeah. So that that's what I got. Yeah, I saw. I saw something different. I saw, I saw something with Guedes as a central striker and Gil on the left of a 4-3-3. Well, yeah, well, we didn't watch the game, so we can't really comment on it. Mm. So, but, yeah, could have been that or could have been the other way, but we'll see. But, yeah, look, positive they had a good first game because starting so close to signing shows that they really think that uh, he should be starting. Like, you don't put a, a signing like that straight into your team unless uh, you think he's a massive upgrade on what you already have. Mm. So that's good, and I'm hoping he has a good loan spell. Be fair though, it was a cup game, so I'm not sure how much of a first team it was. But yeah, anyway, let's move on. The final bit of the update is 
One of our postponed games has been rescheduled. Burnley away has been rescheduled for the 23rd of February, which is now, uh, we've got a lot of fixtures up north now in that space of a week. We go to City um, on the weekend, and then we go to Burnley away midweek, which they're very close to each other. And then we've got Leeds away the following weekend. So I think Spurs may as well stay up north for the whole week. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of travelling for the Tottenham away fans that week. Um, interesting to see who goes up all three games. But... Yeah, so the so the games are starting to get rescheduled now. Um, after the Burnley game, how many more? We got just Brighton, we got Arsenal. Is that just the those two? Because Leicester's already been played, hasn't it? So we've got those, those two, two to be, yeah. those two to be rescheduled as well. So hopefully we can take advantage of that and um, get some wins on the board because we're, the games in hand are very crucial. Yeah, it's going to be a big are. week. United City away. Um, yeah, City away, Burnley away, Leeds away. Very big week. So February is now a really action-packed month with six games uh, throughout the whole of February. Got Five. three consecutive home and then three consecutive away. Yeah, and then March is looking quite empty at the moment. But I'm sure if we win this weekend, there'll be an FA Cup game in there as well. And I'm sure it'll be rescheduled. There'll be yeah. a scheduled game there. Yeah. Uh, but that this Arsenal game, the later and later it gets, the bigger it gets. Definitely. That's mad, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Anyway. That is our uh, Tottenham update for today. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any thoughts regarding any of the news stories we've brought to you today. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on, on you Spurs. Spurs.